I think I am more of a brand ambassador to the brands that I work with than an influencer. Because if I had to imagine what the difference would be, presumably it would be an influencer is kind of someone you pay, you know, for a tweet, someone with strong social media presence and kind of temporary, quick thing that you kind of hire. Whereas a brand ambassador is someone who really matches your values. If I was a brand, I would probably do both, but take my brand ambassador a little more seriously. Hello everyone. Welcome to another episode of Digi Plus Dialogue Season 2. Today we have with us Mr. Saif Ali Khan. We are going to talk to him about brand endorsement. What happens when an actor becomes a brand ambassador? Does he approach his challenges differently from the way he does when he's said action on the sets of films and shows? Let's hear it from him. Welcome to the show, Mr. Khan. Lena, before we go deep into our discussion, I would like to ask you an icebreaker question. Do you remember the first ad you posed for and what the brand was? I think I do. I, yes. The first one I can mentally actually remember. I have a strange feeling I might have been a baby in a Farrex ad, but I don't remember that with my mother. I think my mother might have used me without <laughs> my consent as an infant. Um, it, it, but uh, it, was, it was for Gwalia Suitings. It was a brand um, owned uh, by the Billas, I believe, where... Uh, and I've mispronounced it by calling it Gwalia Suitings. And... and um, Mr. Billah himself said, what, what kind of, in fact, his exact words were, what kind of Nawab are you? It's not Gawalia suiting, it's Gwalia suiting. So since then, I've, been, I've got it right. Okay. Um, I think um, Mr. Ravi Chopra shot it. I remember that. And it was shot in Patodi. You have you've acted in so many films and you have done so many ads. When actor Saif Ali Khan speaks with the brand ambassador Saif Ali Khan, what do they talk to each other? Well, it's not a conversation that actually happens very often. <laughs> that is a, hello, Mr. Brand Ambassador. Today we're going to... But I see what you mean. Uh, and I think I always take... A, I, he's good fun. And mm -hmm. uh, a lot of the scripts that I've done recently are quite entertaining. And the communication has become, uh, you know, clever and fun. So it's kind of a celebration in a way because you've been hired because of your successes uh, as a actor and as a celebrity. So, you know, your personality is kind of being treated as a commodity and as a brand. And so at, the, at that time you say, okay, this is a, a congratulations for having achieved whatever. And, uh, you know, let's say a, a brand like Dollar Banyan or, you know, brand like Lay's Chips says, come and do this ad. I mean, it's a, it's a sort of, it's an award, uh, much more of an award than all the film awards these days or fashion awards. That's a proper award because you feel, you know, you're being paid to represent something that you're kind of proud to represent also. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's that. Uh, you, uh, it's, a, it's a celebration. Uh, you know, we keep speaking to all the CMOs who sign people like you to, you know, fulfill their goals of, of reaching out to the right audiences. Uh, and they keep mentioning that, you know, so-and-so is a, is a national ambassador or a mass follower. So-and-so is niche. If I want a BMW ad, I would rather have this person than that person, even though that person has so much following. Is there an audience that you, or is there a cohort that you naturally connect with, or you don't look at your audience like that? No, I've never tried to do that. You know, I don't understand. I, I wouldn't presume to even uh, know that. Mm -hmm. I just try and connect to the camera uh, in the sense that just to be as honest as I can to that moment, you know, without mm -hmm. really thinking uh, what image do I have and what, what are my uh, responsibilities to a certain, you know, group. Or I mean, I've just never had that kind of mindset. Um, mm -hmm. or, or, you know, nobody's even spoken to me about that really i do know obviously there's a i try and do as much as i can differently as an actor but there is a certain or there was or there is a certain kind of urban brand fit yeah you know when which started way back when in kind of dil chata hai where mm. you know people connected and i i remember signing a whole lot of actually the movie itself was box office wise uh not um you know a box office smasher or something like this i mean it was mm. Um, but the the what it meant in terms of po to popular culture, uh, 
and what it meant to kind of behind the scenes making of movies was hugely momentous. Um, the impact of that film can't be measured in terms of bo box office. And as a result of that film and that role, I, I, I pretty much endorsed everything. Uh, I, I remember measuring the success of the film in that, in those terms, you know. So, um, and I'm at the moment endorsing things like, you know, whether, like I'm saying, Dollar Banyan would be pretty mass, I would have thought. Yeah. Um, you know, and Lay's Gourmet Chips would be um, not, I mean, you know, slightly... I mean, gourmet sounds a little uh, more upper niche, but Lay's is definitely uh, full on mass as well. So I don't know. I think I've done a mix of everything uh, and I've never really thought about fan following. But if you look at the ads I've done, I mean, they're all really different from, you know, Asian paints to um, whatever. I mean, if one was to look at a list, I think I've pretty much, you know, done them all. You mentioned Dilchapa hai as a as a moment. Uh, would you consider your OTT breakthrough through the big shows that you have done for international platforms as another breakthrough? Is there is there a Saif Ali Khan pre that OTT boom and post that OTT boom? Yeah, I think so. Of course, there is, but I don't think it's got anything to do with ads. Uh, okay. I think you know yeah, the the it's creating yet another platform. Mm -hmm. And it's creating yet another space. So, you know, there might be some ads in the digital space generally yeah. that uh, come about which weren't there before. But, um, and it's definitely, you know, reached a different audience in a different way. I mean, there is a, I, I'm surprised. I immediately understood uh, the connection that people have, that very person. It's not like television, which is kind of something which people watch together and sometimes argue over. And, you know, it's like on in the background while people are doing things or it's on while people are doing it. There's a personal connection between the laptop or the phone and the person watching with headphones. So it's a mm -hmm. different, more uh, medium that I've thoroughly enjoyed. And I think, yeah, it's led to such a, you know, so many people getting work and doing work and, you know, it's, it's, it's wonderful as such a creative medium. And it's definitely changed and developed the entertainment world, um, especially, you know, certain platforms. That, that look at the importance of um, making movies more than anything else. I mean, you know, Correct. Uh, I, I, my first show was with Netflix and yeah. I really feel that you know, it's a remarkable focused filmmaking platform, but um, whatever. So, yeah, that's it. I mean, you know, there is, I wouldn't say, no, the, before the, you know, before the digital thing, I was like this and now I'm like this. I mean, if you just look at it in terms of what ads I've done, um, it's been fairly consistent uh, before as well. Yeah. From being brand ambassador to an entrepreneur yourself, and now you have your own uh, own brand, House of uh, from the House of Fatawdi. How, how does how does that work, and and what actually triggered you to launch that brand that you have? Well, I think it was the idea that is there something more I could do with my time and energy that could, you know, be monetized perhaps, or uh, is there a way we can expand? And are we missing? And there's so many opportunities that come because the minute you become some kind of a brand, mm -hmm. um, there's more more to it than acting. I mean, people ask you to come in. And I, I guess I've pretty much always been a celebrity of some sort, you know. So I've not really thought about this, but you know, if you have an opening of a shop and there's no celebrity sometimes, I mean nobody even knows about it. I mean, it actually carries quite a lot of weight in yeah. terms of uh, getting noticed, you know. Just uh and, and once I understood that, you say, what does this guy associate himself with? You know, I really do like kurtas. I like ethnic clothes. Yeah. Um, and we, my management at Exceed and Afsar and I did some brainstorming. And uh, he came up with this kind of thing where we took it to a platform like Mintra and said that if we found the right price points mm -hmm. uh, and made the idea accessible, and yet linked it with some kind of heritage and some kind of old world thing. So actually the philosophy behind it was uh, a kind of, you know, an old world class in the brand made very accessible to the common man. That was the kind of idea. And, and I think that's the case because a lot of things when I was growing up were out of people's reach. You know, like if you think about personalized crockery or, you know, stuff like that. I mean, these were for Nawabs and Maharajas costing thousands and thousands of pounds. Mm -hmm. You know, a French uh, firm like Limoges or some English firm, you know, making it for you. Now you can get this stuff done. I mean, you can personalize linen and clothes. And it's really not that expensive to get 
So that availability to people, and you, you know, there's many shops where you can get beautiful things. Earlier, that was so expensive. Now, mm -hmm. even like middle class kind of uh, price points can be beautiful, you know. Um, and and I think that's really wonderful. And that's the idea that not to to kind of bring things within reach. Um, so that's really where it kind of came from. And what was the response to the reaction that you have got after you launched the product? And the brand. Well, it did. I mean, it, I don't actually have the kind of numbers. I remember we speak very macro, my manager and I, and we do keep an eye and we keep giving inputs on design and stuff like that. And he was like, this is something that will help you, you know, uh, like a surprise retirement fund, you know, like it will just, it kind of keeps giving a certain amount. And so it was one of those things. So it's been successful. And I mean, somebody was saying number one in this thing and doing well on that and I mean, a lot of things start and just don't take off. Um, and a couple, you know, a couple of things that I know of have. Um, and this is one of them because there seems to be, I mean, obviously, the, I'm fed up with people saying the audience is smart and uh, obviously, <laughs> obviously they're smart, but they kind of sense a, a natural fit. Um, and, you know, they've taken to it. Uh, it's not just a flash. And so, I mean, we're grateful to them as well. And yeah, they have worked you on it. You know, it started off an online thing. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, people kept an eye on the complaints, even we did. And I remember the first kurta I got, there was, it's tricky making you know, where the buttonhole must stay closed and you take all these things for granted. It has to be easy to wear, not crush and easy to put on. So we worked and worked and worked and, and now it's kind of, you know, working in that sense. And we've taken the complaints seriously. Uh, one of the reasons it took off is you posing for it. And, and how does it feel to pose for your own brand, you know, versus the thousands of other ads that you've worked on? Well, I mean, it's a cool feeling in the sense that, you know, when you're, when you're posing for any ad, I mean, as, as a professional, you know, you're giving it your best. Mm -hmm. And at that moment, they're all your brands, you know, whoever you're posing for. Um, but there's a, it's a nice feeling to know that, you know, there's a responsibility somewhere where you feel, which is the same as every brand, but this time you'll be benefiting if it does well, rather than someone else. <laughs> but the level of commitment is is the same. Uh, in fact, in fact, they might your own brand might say we'll pay you later. <laughs> <laughs> Whereas the, with the others, you know, it's it's more um, professional. You know, I can go on and on, but it's my last question to you because I know we have run out of the time. Uh, you know, for us who cover media advertising and marketing, we keep talking to marketers, and then and we see that influencer marketing is coming up as this big thing. All big brands globally, they're talking about influencer marketing, and suddenly brand ambassadors have become influencers in some sorts, and they are being called as influencers. What's your point of view on this entire nomenclature of brand ambassador versus influencer? Would you be would you like if somebody calls you an influencer rather than a brand ambassador? No, I mean, I don't mind. You can, you know, you can call me whatever you want. But I'm saying I think I am more of a brand ambassador to the brands that I work with than an influencer. Because if I had to imagine what the difference would be, presumably it would be an influencer is kind of someone you pay, you know, for a tweet, someone mm -hmm. with strong social media presence and kind of temporary, quick um, thing that you kind of hire. Whereas a brand ambassador is someone who really matches your values and mm -hmm. is kind of doing a, you know, chalta pirta ad for you just by walking around. And you say, oh, this fellow has got the same qualities as that. And, you know, Lay's and Saif or, you know, whatever mm -hmm. uh, the brand is. Um, they, they, you're kind of doing a 24-hour a job kind of representing them because you got hired in the first place because your values and attitude and energies match. Um, so I think it's a longer term more. And I think... If I was a brand, I would probably do both, but take my brand ambassador a little more seriously. I don't know. Great. Fantastic. It answers the question. You've mentioned it really well. Thank you. Thank you very much for your time. It was a pleasure talking my to you. My pleasure. Nice talking to you, Anurban. Hopefully again soon.